peace of God be with and upon you on this glorious day. So, happy 4th of July weekend, everyone. Thank you for coming out and celebrating the Lord's Day with me. We are getting hit with a double whammy today. Yes, it's 4th of July weekend, and it's very important that we spend our time with our family. But COVID is still alive and well and active in our community, and we need, need to be paying attention to how it's affecting us and what's going on around us. Even though masks are not mandatory in the church any longer, and they're not required, please keep an eye on one another. If you are running a low-grade temperature, stay home. If you think that you might be sick, stay home. If you got a cold, stay home. And as we prepare for flu season, come to church. <laughs> what better place to be? <laughs> because in the church, I've taken a poll, in the church we do not pass germs around. <laughs> no one's buying that. Please, join me in prayer as you're able. Gracious and holy God, we gather our hearts and minds together to celebrate this glorious day in remembrance of those who served, who gave their lives, who gave their time. We thank you and we thank them. Lord, as we come before you on this glorious day, please help us to see for ourselves what is important and how we should walk into the world in your light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. I have a couple of announcements. One in the book is Thinking Forward Sessions begin this Wednesday at 6.30. In the Rainbow Room. In the Rainbow Room. Thank you. Um, also, this being the first Sunday of the month, we want to bring attention to the little pink envelopes. This is the week that we ask people to think about um, making a donation to the Diagnet Fund. That is a uh, fund that supports um, members, of the, members of the church, members of the community. Um, it is um, once a month we ask for this, and we ask people to think about it on the first of the month. And... Andy has an announcement. Good morning, everyone. Um, I just want to uh, call everyone's attention to something new that will be starting up, and that is a hand chime um, workshop that I will be uh, that will be starting. So, if anyone is interested, look for it in an upcoming e-blast. There'll be a questionnaire to judge. Um, interest and to see how we should go forward doing it. But uh, just briefly, the hand chimes, you may have seen them performed once or twice with the choir, um, but we have an entire set and you just ring them with your hand. They're very easy, much easier than um, hand bells, but with much of the same satisfaction and much of the beautiful sound that hand bells provide. So look forward to that in an e-blast and there'll be a questionnaire to judge um, when we might be able to do it during the week, what day would be best for everyone. And also, um, just to get some numbers and see who might be interested. So keep that in mind, and I look forward to making some music with you over the summer. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other announcements that weren't in the book? Pastor Dave? Pastor Dave? I guess not. So will you join me in the unison call to worship, which being the first Sunday, is our vision statement. Um, and would you please stand? We joyfully celebrate Christ's presence and God's grace in our lives. We respect one another in love, actively seeking and embracing those who wish to grow with us in faith, hope, and love. With God's guidance, we minister to the spiritual, and physical needs of the community. Through service, we flourish. Amen. 
And our opening hymn, it's different from in the bulletin, is number 720, O Beautiful for Spacious Skies. That would be page 720, everyone. Please be seated. Join me in the unison prayer of confession found in your bulletin. Merciful and forgiving God, I have attempted to walk in your light, but have fallen short in far too many areas. Lord, forgive my doubts and lack of faith at times, as I forget who should have control. Holy Spirit, lead me, lead me to a true remembrance of who Jesus is and why he came. Children of God, hear the good news. God hears the sorrows that sit on our hearts and know that through Christ we are forgiven. Praise be to God. Amen. And would you stand for the Gloria Patri? Restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that your, yourselves are not tempted. 
Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think there is something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work, then that work rather than their neighbor's work will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. This morning's gospel lesson is taken from Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 11. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town, in every place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into, this, into his harvest. Go on your way. I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if, the per, if a person of peace is there, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will be returned to you. Remain in the house, eating and drinking whatever they provide. For the, labor deserves his, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off and protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. So ends our reading this morning. May this reading give us information and insight on how to carry God's light into this world that so desperately needs it. Amen. Amen. Please join me in prayer as you are able. Spirit of God, we seek your presence to be among and upon us this morning. Loving God, we seek your help to pull ourselves away from the world in its ways. Lord, help us to see and hear what is said and what truth may lie beneath. Holy Spirit, open our hearts and minds so that we may become more understanding of one another in the world. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the reflections of our hearts reflect your love and peace for all your children. And may our hearts and minds unite in love for you and your ways. Amen. So, even though you have the title for the sermon written in your bulletin, could you take, guess by just the readings alone what we need to talk about? No? Okay. Is anybody awake besides me? <laughs> Thank you. We, at, we talk about discipleship all the time. It's kind of like a mantra for us. We're disciples. Discipleship is so important. But what is discipleship? 
Have you ever really sat down and thought about what discipleship truly is? And how does discipleship fit and work in your lives? What do you do or not do to let this world see the light of God illuminate from your deeds and your words? These and many other questions about your discipleship need to be asked, prayed upon, and reflected upon. You and your family need to sit down and talk about who God is to you. What God's work truly is so that you and your family can apply your gifts that you're entrusted with. Your time, your talent, and your treasures need to enter into spaces where they're needed. Why do you, you need to talk about becoming involved in discipleship? Why do you need to sit and make, I'm looking for the right word, it's escaping me, but you have to plan. You have to know what discipleship is for you. You need to know that with everything, there's going to be a cost right up front. Discipleship is no different. There's going to be a cost to it. Also, no one but you and God are involved in your discipleship decisions. Not your pastor, not your spouse, you and God. However, there's always a however, isn't there? If the pathways that you seem to be following are foggy and unsure, Open yourself, become vulnerable, and sit and talk with one another in truth and in honesty. Great trust is placed in these conversations because you're, t you're talking about something that hits your very soul. You need to understand also that once you have decided what true discipleship means to you, and you've placed your feet on the pathway, there is no turning back. You can never go back to the way it was. And once our feet hit, that, hit those pavements, beautiful things can happen. But we can't go backwards. You have to understand too, being a disciple of Christ takes Time. It's the first commitment we make to the church, our time. The most precious gift that we are given. And if you don't prioritize the time needed, I will promise you with this, the world will drag you into it and into its ways. Because when nothing is planned, all of a sudden, a million things pop up. And if you don't plan, then it's not done. So you have to ask yourself, am I honestly willing to set aside the time for God's work in my neighbors? Is the work that is being done here in this church important to you in your walk? If the answer to these are no, or I don't think so, well, then you need to place yourself in the forward thinking sessions and start to help us to uncover what missions and ministries are important to you. Discipleship requires your, the use of your talents. You see, not every one of us has all the skills needed to do everything. And if you fu fully think that you have every skill that's needed to do everything, well, we're probably going to die of a heart attack at a very young age. Because discipleship, it can be hard work. Yes, it's enjoyable. But it's also at times difficult. 
And when many of us come together to do a mission or a ministry, the work is lighter. And hey, give me for a minute. It's more fun. It is. I, have the, I am so blessed that I get to do ministry and mission work on two different ends. Sometimes, because everybody's working, I go out on my own and I do something. Yeah, okay. But when we have the opportunity to take one or two more with us, oh, all types of stuff can happen. And it's not bad. It's good trouble. But we need, you to, we need your talents. Maybe you're one of those that are sitting there thinking, well, my talents aren't really that important. Well, folks, you need to sit. You need to think. You need to pray upon this. And please, take as much time as you need. Because self-worth and understanding the gifts you were given does also take time. But also, while you're doing this, while you're thinking about what it is that can use your time and talents, get involved in something anyways that interests you. Maybe it's the common, like where Bob and Ken are there this morning, doing discipleship. They're just out there with, our, with the people of the town, enjoying. How spectacular is that? The work is not always roll up your sleeves and make a big mess. Sometimes this really does enjoy a lot of fun. It involves so much. So you need to think about this because there are many aspects and many directions involved in God's work. And although no one person has everything needed, when we come together as the body of Christ, God has given us every gift, every talent that we need. And it's sitting here with us. It's just a matter of getting up off the couch at home and putting them to work. I know, but pastor, it's 900 degrees out there. Ah, you'll get over it. Drink water. Thank you, Judy. Judy fell asleep on me. Okay, we have responsibilities for what we're going to do. Also this, if the church does not have a ministry or mission that you believe is, could use your skills or are using your skills and talents, then you too must attend the forward thinking sessions. Discipleship calls for the use of your treasures. And if giving to the ministries and the missions of the church is not the top of your family's list, then you too need to attend the forward thinking sessions. Because obviously the work the church is doing does not captivate your whole attention. And there's truly nothing wrong with this, just so you know, with not knowing where you're called to be. What might be wrong is not talking about it and talking about God's work and the responsibilities that we carry as a true disciple. Now, there's a number of us sitting in this space that, well, we're happy with things the way they are. Let's not rock the boat. Let's not shake things up. Then, my dear brothers and sisters, I hate to say this, you're either dead or asleep. For life does not sit still. If you don't believe that, go out there and watch your grass. Even a simple blade of grass does not sit still. It keeps growing until it's dead. If you are not excited, spiritually and mentally motivated, know that this is going to lead to a deep spiritual death that's going to happen. 
The body of Christ must be, the body of Christ must seek ways to answer the world's needs today. The Spirit of God reminds the heart and the mind of God's work in Jesus' ministry. But if you don't know, if you're just happy with the way things are going, there's hope. For you too need to plug into these forward thinking sessions. Now, have you gotten a hint about this, about the forward thinking? In the forward thinking? And we're only talking about the life of our congregation. We're only talking about the life of this body of Christ. For I do not believe in my heart and in my mind that this body is done. I think it needs to be shaken up. Think about that. Shaken up. But, but pastor, every time you change something, we have a conniption. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Get used to it. God's work is not changing. It's been the same for 2,000 years. It's just that simple. We're supposed to care and love, for our, love our neighbors. We're supposed to care and love God. Care and have love for God. But the work isn't going to change. How we do it needs to be addressed. For the old ways are gone. They're dead. Bury them. Maybe we need to put a coffin up here for the old ways and take it on outside. I don't know. But I do know this. If we keep doing things the same way we've always done them, this is the result we're going to have. Does that mean that I have all the answers? As a friend of mine tells me, am I the silver bullet for the church? No. Here's your silver bullet. Go to work. Start doing God's work. That's the silver bullet this church needs. Have the courage and the faith that is needed to go out there and to do this. Listen to Jesus' words for just a moment. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. Even this early in Jesus' ministry, the work is taking on a new meaning, a new dimension. At first, Jesus sent out the 12. Now Jesus is sending out the, 20, the 72. The work of God is new and different. God does not like repeating things. Hear that. God loves new and exciting things. If you don't believe that, walk outside. See that maple tree where no two leaves are the same. Look amongst yourselves. There's no two people sitting in this space that are the exact same. So why do we think that God wants us to repeat things again and again and again? The good news is that we're alive and we're well. We have our brains. Our bodies are getting a little rough. But there's the work we can do if we put our imaginations to it. God's people must hit the road. We need to be outside. For the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. You know, when we look around ourselves, and we look around this space, many of us wonder, 
where are the children of God that are supposed to be here? Well, supposed to be here is our words because we feel they're supposed to. You want people to start doing stuff? Stop telling them what to do. It's that simple. You're all smart people. So aren't they? But right now, they're out there because nobody's invited them or called them in or given them a reason to come in. For you see, if there is only one pathway into service, and I don't mean worship, if there is only one pathway to service, are we surprised that more are not answering the call? We want people here? I know, I would love to see people here. I would love to see a hundred of us gathered on Sunday. That means we need a congregation of about 300 people. They're not going to come knocking on our door. We have to deliver the message in deed and word to them. And let them know you're welcome. So you can't come to worship yet, but you can come to serve your neighbors. Then please come and serve. Show the world how it's supposed to be. For with our walk and our talk, people will slowly but surely pop in. Yep, we'll just pop in. But they gotta be invited. Well, Dave, I don't get invited to stuff, I just show up. Yep, same here. We just show up. But this generation needs to be invited. They need, be, they need to know they're wanted. That it's not the big white building that's important, but the person that occupies the big white building. They need to hear. Let's go and talk about Paul for just a minute. Paul sends his disciples out with no earthly extras. No money. <laughs> no suitcases. Well, no suitcases. They haven't been invented yet, but not even a bag for their stuff. No letters of credit. Just one another. And they are to go out in faith. In faith alone. That's what God's, that's what Jesus is telling them. Faith in God will ensure that you get whatever is going to be needed. Trusting in God for whatever they needed as they did God's work showed truly how vested they were. You see, meeting people outside our walls is where it truly begins. This is where we truly start living into the great commandments and the great commission. For, you to, for folks that don't know what those two are, the two great commandments, paraphrasing, is going to be to love God, to love our neighbors. The great commission is to build disciples. Those are our tasks. So why do we make it so difficult? <laughs> it's fun. It's a human thing. Jesus instructed them on what to do. And Jesus also instructed them on what to do if they weren't welcome. A good friend of mine once told me many years ago that, you know, Jesus couldn't get them all. So what makes us think we can? We're not going to get them all. Just as Jesus was sending out the disciples from town to town, they did not get every town to follow Jesus and to, and to go with God in God's ways. But there were those few that heard and followed. Jesus instructed them to spread the good news 
And this is what Jesus held him accountable for. He did not hold him accountable for the result. Because some are not ready to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Some will never be ready to hear the news. But we will be held accountable for delivering the good news to the world. So many may not answer, but those few that do, those few that do. Today we see that far too many people argue, use force, or attempt to intimidate people to get their own personal opinion across to them. This is not how Jesus worked. Far too many of us work today in the darkness on our own agendas. And there's no room for God's light in work in this type of situation. The work takes faith. Not faith in yourself, but in the faith in God. Jesus told us that the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. But you got to know there's some weeds out there. It's okay. It is not one of the things that absolutely astound me today is that Christians that are supposed to know better throw the towel in way too early. Well, pastor, no one's coming to church. Well, pastor, they got a whole new agenda out there. Well, pastor, I guess we're going to end up closing the church. Well, pastor, why don't we look at this in the correct light, in the light of God, which is, yo, pastor, The sanctuary is empty. The harvest is plentiful. So if they are not here, let us go to where they are. In all of Jesus' missions, in everything he did, he went to them. He didn't expect them to come to him. Take that. Hold that. Because it's what's going to add new life to us. It's a wonderful thing. We want to fill the two great commandments. We want to fill the great commission. It's not going to happen in these walls. Here's where it happens. Paul tells us, so then, whenever an opportunity Whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all and especially for those of the family of faith. Bringing God's light into a distracted world might seem challenging to some. And we have a great event for our church coming up soon, which is August 13th. This is going to be discipleship of this body of Christ in force. Showing the world who we are. But we are not waiting for that. For we sent out two disciples this morning to do the work of God. So, does hanging out, playing games, passing out bags and information, is that the work of God? I'm pretty sure that Bob and Ken aren't down there evangelizing. Or are they evangelizing? Maybe they're evangelizing a new way of being by just showing up, by being friendly, by being open, by showing people we have nothing to fear. The harvest takes place out in the sun, not in the dark. I'm going to end with this this morning. And we're going to end with Paul's words. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right. 
For we will reap harvest at harvest time if we do not give up. Lord, hear this prayer of ours. Strengthen us. Keep us faithful. And show us a new way to bring your light to these children. In Jesus' name, amen. Our next hymn will be I Come With Joy, number 420. Please be seated. This is Christ's table. This is a table that's open to all. This table speaks the language of life. It speaks of people given everything they need for an abundant life. It speaks of people who know how to be honest and just but choose to live as an example of how not to live life. It speaks of people who need a way out of darkness, but who waste life trying to change a decision they have no intention of changing. This table speaks of Jesus Christ. It speaks of love as the greatest power on earth. It speaks of judgment and forgiveness. This stable speaks your language in my language. And may it always be so. Amen. Please join me in singing the Lord's Prayer number 307.
This is Jesus' table, set up with simple gifts from God. This table is open to all that wish to have a relationship or to know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So as we come to this table, welcome one another, for this table is not barred to any, but all in all of our brokenness are welcomed into God's love. Holy One, by the power of the Holy Spirit, bless these simple gifts of bread and wine, allowing them to become more. May our spirits jump with joy and remembrance of all that you have given in love. May this bread and new wine feed our spirits in the remembrance and understanding of your grace and forgiveness that is offered to all of God's children through your life and sacrifice. Amen. Know that on the evening of his betrayal, the 12 disciples and Jesus gathered together for one last meal to honor and to see. During the meal, Jesus took bread, said a blessing, and broke it, and said to his disciples, this is my body that is broken for you. Take and eat. After the meal had come to a conclusion, Jesus took a new wine flask, holding new wine, and he took it and he poured, and he said a blessing upon it, and he said to his disciples, take and drink, for this is a sign of the new covenant that has been poured out in my blood for you. Take and drink. Please join me in the prayer of thanksgiving that is printed in your bulletin. Gracious and loving God, we thank you and praise you for calling us to your table. We thank you for joining us at this feast of remembrance. We have been strengthened as we depart from this table and are now prepared to enter into the world in hope and faith for what comes next. You have made us one in body of Christ and nourished us at your table with holy food and drink. Now send us forth as your people into the world. Grant us strength to persevere as we proclaim the good news in all we say and do in the name of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. God loves us so much. God supplies us with everything we truly need for a good spiritual and mental life and well-being. 
if we'll only just apply what we've been, what we know, and what we are taught. One of the things that God does call for us to do is to give back. Not because God needs it, but it's a sign, it's a token of our faith and our belief that we have enough and enough to share with our neighbors. And at this time, I invite you, because of COVID, we don't pass around the collection plate at this time. So we have an offering box set up in the back. If you have not yet made your morning offering, please feel free to rise and to go into the back and make your offering as you are able. Let our morning offering begin. Please rise as you are able. And would you please join me in the prayer of dedication that's listed, that's printed in your bulletin. Lord, we place these offerings before you in the hope and faith that they are acceptable in your sight. We know that nothing on this earth can ever match the gifts to have me give us. God of wisdom, we entrust these gifts leadership of Please be seated. We come to the time that as you hear me say all of the time, this is one of the greatest gifts that God has given us. It's such a great gift because we know that no matter what happens in our lives, we have someone to share it with. When things are good, we have someone to celebrate with. When things are tough, we have someone that can help to carry us. And when our lives are in total chaos, we find a foundation, a stone to hold on to during the storm. At this time, I invite anyone that would like to place a joy or a concern before the congregation and God to please raise it up now. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Um, three things. One, Pat Jeffries has moved. She's over at the Brookhaven Assisted Care in West Brookfield. It's just down the street from where she was, beyond the um, town hall on the right. It's just easy to find, Brookhaven. And um, I'll try and get that information to the secretary so she can post it. Um, next, Linda Dragon. I bumped into her this week. And a couple months ago, she fell and was knocked out for hours and is having serious neurological problems since then. 
Um, she can't even walk without holding on to something. She's very, very dizzy, um, just really in pretty bad shape. So if you get a chance to reach out to her, that would be wonderful. That was Linda. Linda Dragon. No last names, please. Sorry. It's but okay. Linda is kinda no, hey, we all joined in. That's the reason I'm, rem I'm reminding she us, said please. It's okay to say it. All right. So I'm Glenna Pearson, and I'll say it to the world. And this is my loving husband, Harry. And this Saturday, we are finally going to be able to celebrate our 50th, which was in May. But right now, nobody has a broken anything or has any COVID or any of those many things from the last year or two. So we have finally come together this Saturday. We'd love to have you join us at our home in Brookfield for an open house to celebrate our 50th. And um, it's just four miles north of Tantasqua. And um, just to make you want to come more, not that we aren't enough, but <laughs> Keith Weekly's coming. Bob and Michelle May are coming, and Bing and Sue Shearer are coming. Are you ready for that? The event of the season, hello. Come and join us, please. Is it on? I just want to thank all the uh, young gentlemen who came up and helped again at my home, uh, stacking all the wood, especially Harry, Bob, Rick, Laverne. Uh, young man. Huh? Young man. Young man. <laughs> wow, there's some elderly. But, you know, you talk about discipleship, and it's way beyond what I've expected for the last three, four weeks that they've been doing that around my home. So everything that I needed. Thank you. They are beautiful people. Yeah, um, the church family received a, a note from Emma Fancy, one of our award winners last week, and she wanted to express to the church family her sincere gratitude for honoring me with the education award from this church, and she's so appreciative of, of your support. So thank you, and for anybody that has a heart, if you were able to read uh, the note that came out asking for uh, over-the-counter medicines, particularly for kids uh, in Lebanon, that box back there will be here every Sunday, and when it's not, it'll be in the office with Catherine. We'll be collecting till July 17th. It'd be very much, if you can see your way to it, very much appreciated. Thank you. A little side note on why Bob's bringing the mic up here on Susie's comment about leaving medications in the office only, please. Please, no medications being left in the common area. If she's not here, take them home with you or see if I'm here. I'll be more than happy to take them if I'm here when you come in. But we don't want to leave children susceptible to an accidental overdose due to medications. And believe it or not, things like Tylenol, cough medicines and stuff, can they can cause massive problems. So let's be careful of our little ones. Uh, yes, I'd like uh, prayers for my Masonic brother, Harry Penniman. He's got COVID. What's his, what was his last initial? P? Let's put Liz in our prayers, please. It's good to see her this morning. Hi, Liz. That means that she's healing and getting a little bit better. But more importantly, Liz, and since we're sitting in the sanctuary right now, you have to answer this honestly. Are you behaving yourself? I have to. I, I understand. So you, she, she went like this. I have to. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and anything else? Yeah. 
Yes, oh. hi, Bob. Yeah, Barbara wanted me to mention that uh, Jenny Burton slipped and fell and broke uh, two vertebrae and a rib. Let's keep Nancy in our prayers also this week, as she did take a bad fall, and she's recuperating, so let's keep her in our prayers and hope for quick and speedy recovery. Please, don't. I have one more. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's a joy. Uh, our Southern family, our daughter Rebecca from Florida and her husband, and um, Leah and Sean and the two boys from North Carolina are all coming up between uh, this evening and tomorrow. Um, and we'll be here for um, at least a week. Um, and all 21 Bardsley family and related will be going to the Woo Sox game on Thursday. <laughs> it's a first. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious and holy God, we place ourselves before you, both in celebration, in worry, and grief. Lord, we ask that you watch over our brothers and sisters that are finding themselves sick, hurting, and on the mend. We ask that your power and grace be with and upon them during these times. That they find the strength to listen to the doctors, Liz, and also to give themselves permission just to heal and to be for a while. Lord, we know that as children and as your children, we think we're invincible at times. But Lord, we also need to understand we need to slow down at times. So grant us that gift. Lord, but we have celebrations here too. As our family comes together, there's a celebration of marriage and commitment and what it truly means to be with one another. Marriage is a time of understanding. It's a time of compromise. It's a time of just being with one another in the darkness and in the light, in the joy and in the sadness. It's a completeness. And we thank you for this. And we thank you for this shining example that it is definitely worth it, Lord. Lord, we also hold up all of our veterans at this time as we celebrate the 4th of July. And we ask you to watch over all of the families and friends that are celebrating and coming together. May they use your wisdom as they celebrate. May they be aware of what too much partying can cause. May they watch out for one another. Lord, we thank the veterans that are sitting in this group for serving and for maintaining our freedoms so that we can meet on Sunday mornings and celebrate. Lord, we thank our veterans that made the ultimate sacrifice and saw the bigness of what was happening. Every day, Lord, should be celebrated as the 4th of July for right now as we're struggling to maintain some type of normalcy. Teach us and show us the way. Lord, we ask you to place wisdom upon the leadership of our church and to bless her and to keep your Holy Spirit present and amongst us, invigorating our hearts and minds. Lord, we ask you to watch over all the leadership of the world we ask you to protect and watch over the president 
and all the people that are willingly sacrifice their time and their lives into some greater cause. Lord, protect them and give them the wisdom to know that they are to lead and lead well. Lord, we thank you for all the first responders that step up, for our police departments, for our firemen, for our EMTs, our nurses, our doctors, the kitchen staff, the custodians. All of these people come together to make sure that we get healthy and are taken care of well. Lord, protect them and give them your grace. Lord, most of all, during this 4th of July celebration, your wisdom is needed. Your wisdom that what we're doing is important. Please keep your light shining in our face, in our hearts and in our minds that we may go forward and show the world that there is a better way to live. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning will be All Who Love and Serve Your City, number 670. Please stand as you are able. Now, my brothers and sisters, as we depart from this safe, secure spot and we enter into the unknown, may God keep you, shield you, and surround you with peace and love. May the lessons that Jesus taught 
continue to have value in your heart and mind. And may the Holy Spirit constantly teach you new ways of being with and amongst the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.